welcome or welcome back to the 8th Concession. My name is Natalie. You can see behind me that it's March on the 8th Concession and we still have a lot of snow. You can also hear the red-winged blackbirds have returned. They're claiming their territory. It sounds like spring, but it sure doesn't look like spring. We didn't have much snow for most of the winter. We actually had a fairly mild winter until we hit about February, March. <laughs> and then we got a couple of dumpings of at least a foot each time of snow and you can see it's still on the ground. Now there's a funny thing about spring in Southern Ontario and that's a, that is it's not always a really gentle spring. <laughs> Sometimes what happens is we have cold, 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 snow, 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 and then all of a sudden the temperatures jump, everything melts within like a week or two or, or three and everything's green and it's spring. So you don't always have a lot of time to get to those chores that you need to do before things start growing. And that's what I'm going to tackle today because lately we've been climbing above freezing during the day, so six or seven degrees Celsius, which is about 42, 44 Fahrenheit. And um, you know, it's feeling very warm, the sun is very strong, and then it dips below zero again overnight. But I need to do something now before everything just starts growing. And that is what's behind me. That is my little orchard of six trees and I need to prune them. Now, I am new to the orchard because when we lived in town, although I gardened, I've gardened for years, vegetables and such, but I've never had an orchard. We never had the room in town. So I'm kind of new to the whole orchard thing and although the trees are doing great, I think this is their third year. This will be their third season. Maybe it's the fourth. I think it's the third. Um, I haven't been that great about pruning them. Uh, as someone who's not used to having fruit trees, I was feeling a little um, timid about doing it. I didn't really want to cut them. I did do the first pruning when I planted them according to the, the instructions of the place where I bought the trees. But since then, I've just been kind of too scared to do it. But I don't want the trees to get sort of out of control. I'm kind of hoping this might be the year that we get some real fruit. We've had a couple of sour cherries, but I mean two. And I think the birds got to them before I did. And we had blooms on our peach tree, not this past summer, but the summer before or spring before, um, but no fruit developed. So I'm really hoping this is the year I get some fruit. And in order to give them the best chance, I need to keep the trees healthy, give them a little bit of support over there with uh, removing some of the branches that don't belong. And so that's what I'm going to tackle today. Now I did watch Laura over on Garden Answer as to how she prunes her fruit trees. So that's the method I'm going to follow today. And then I have my pruning shears here. I've had these for a long time, you can see, and they need a little bit of care as well. They're getting quite dull. They're really good ones. I have to see, I put it in my pocket. I got a gift from uh, one of my kids for Christmas, and it's this little device. And this is supposed to be a sharpener for um, pruning shears. And so I'm going to use this first to sharpen these before I tackle the trees because I really don't want, you know, cuts where it's kind of ripping at the wood. I want it to be a nice clean cut. I also have some rubbing alcohol. <laughs> My paper towel <laughs> fell in the snow. I have to go get more paper towel. And then I'm going to tackle sharpening and cleaning my pruning shears to get ready to do my orchard. So I'm just going to do it over here on our barbecue because I don't really have anywhere else out here. We don't have any table or chairs out this time of year. So I'm going to first clean off my shears with a bit of alcohol. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I have never used my sharpener before. But I did watch how to do it. So I've just pulled out my blade and I've tightened it so it'll stay out. Now on one side of my pruning shears you can see it is flat but on this side, I'm not sure you can see that, there's a bit of a bevel here. 
and that's the part I'm going to sharpen. Now, according to the instructions, I just take, I guess it would be better if I went like this. Just pull this. along that edge a few times. Now they say you should do this once a year. I've never done it <laughs> so it might need a little more work than other ones. Just sharpening that edge there and then said so just to go once over the back and that then I can do this side also on the bevel just a little bit. Well, I hope that's done the trick. So for those of you who didn't join me on the property tour way back, I want to point out that I have six trees in my orchard. These two at the front are apple trees. This one is a Macintosh cross and this one is a Gala cross. Behind that one is a sour cherry and over here is a sweet cherry. No, other way around. That's the sweet, that's the sour cherry. That's the sweet cherry. That at the very back is a Bartlett pear, a red Bartlett pear. And at the back on this side is a peach tree. So the good thing about having all this snow is I don't think I'm going to need a ladder because I've got about a foot and a half of snow under me. So, um, now for the pruning. So according to the instructions, first I look for damage or anything dead, remove that. Then I look for weaker branches that are pointing backwards towards the tree. And um, then I have to trim down the height of some of them. Certainly the peach has gotten quite tall. That's the one that scares me the most, just cutting them off at the top, um, just above an outward facing bud. So all this information came from Laura at Garden Answer. I'm gonna follow her advice and tackle this. Probably be a bit timid the first time, but we'll see how it goes. So this Mac cross here, Actually, I don't think I need to do anything to this one. All the branches are facing out. There is a central leader. I think I'm supposed to trim that off. Hmm. I'm hesitating. But that's what you're supposed to do. All right. I hope that was right. With the Gala cross apple, you can see I was hesitating about this one branch. It is crossing back in. I suppose I'm supposed to take that out. Okay. I also trimmed it back a bit. So this is my sweet cherry. You can see it's done really well growing, but I have a feeling I have a lot of trimming to do. And now for the sour cherry. This one needs a lot of work. Well, that looks a lot better. Now, a lot of this was trimmed last year by the deer. <laughs> they came along and nibbled it all off. You can see like here. That was all where the deer had taken it back to. Well, it's not perfect, but I think I've made a good start. Now my red Bartlett pear has me in a bit of a dilemma. You can see down here, there's some coming from really far down. Now these are all grown on rootstock, but I believe this one right here 
actually has come up from above the rootstock, which means it's the actual red Bartlett. And I kind of want to see if I can propagate another one by taking a cutting off that one. So I'm actually going to leave that one long one for now until I'm ready to try and sort of trim it off and see if I can root some more Bartlett pears. Now this tree has been in my orchard. Um, it was put in one year after the other trees. I didn't have it right away. So it's younger. I don't think it needs much work. As you can see, it doesn't actually have a whole lot going on here. So I'm just gonna check it over. And if any of these on the bottom actually come from below um, the graft, then I'm gonna trim them out because they'll be from the, the, just the root stalk. So I'm gonna just have a closer look over here. I'm gonna let this one grow just a little bit longer before I start trimming it too much. And I'm gonna check on these when the snow is gone. Now, that looks so much better. The trees are ready for spring. If it starts to warm up and they start to bud, perfect. Because now I've left the sturdier branches that can support any fruit. And here's hoping that we get some fruit this year. Oh, and if you're wondering what these, uh, the blue ribbons are that are in the trees, if you've been following any of my trail cam videos, you'll know we are what I call a deer superhighway here. We have deer everywhere. And this tree in particular, the sour cherry, was uh, pretty decimated by deer. Not this year, but certainly last year. And I did some research that deer can't see a lot of colors, but they can see blue. So... Just to give it a try, I decided to put in blue ribbons because I figured with the wind blowing them and they could see them, it might keep them away from my trees. You can see we also have white collars on the trees. That's for the rabbits and the apple cages were also for the rabbits. In the summer, I like to take the white collars off so like the trunk can breathe and I had to keep them, I had to put the wire around the apple trees because the rabbits were just eating them like crazy. But yes, the blue ribbons, you know, they haven't done too bad. I haven't had any nibbles this winter anyway. So I just thought with the breeze blowing them, maybe it would help. It certainly wouldn't do any harm. So thanks for coming along with me today while I took the plunge and pruned my fruit trees in my orchard to get them ready for spring, which I hope is going to come soon because I am done with winter. Bye for now. Thank you.